Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. It's time for yet another ranking my last 10 palettes video. I did already recently do a ranking all of my palettes from 2021 video, so if you haven't checked that out, go check it out. There were like 70 palettes in that video. It was a lot, but I thought it was really fun to film and you guys seemed to really enjoy it, so... Yeah, we're just gonna continue on with this series. My plan is at the end of the year to rank literally everything from 2021, so who even knows how many palettes that's gonna be? Uh, but yeah, we're at another 10. I'm pretty sure half of these were in that ranking my 2021 palettes video, so if you saw that, this ranking might not be that surprising to you, but I still wanted to do it. I wanted just to kind of focus on the most recent 10 and kind of go from there and chat about everything. I just love these videos. I think they're fun. You seem to enjoy them as well, so. Here we are. Before we hop into it though, I did of course film this look. I film every look you see on camera. Nothing changes there. Um, it should already be up on YouTube by the time this video goes up. It's part of my two looks video with the Lethal Cosmetics Lethal Is Dead palette in collaboration with Teresa Is Dead. And let me just give you my details. My plugs today are from Here No Evil Jewelry on Etsy. You can use my non-affiliated discount code Butebean for 10% off. This choker is from a local shop in Orlando called Prometheus Esoterica. My ring is from Love, and I think I got this hat off of Amazon, but it's many, many, many years old, so I'm not totally sure on that. Anyways, without further ado, do. Let's just hop in and rank my last 10 palettes. All right, so just to kick it off, I did want to say I don't really dislike any of the palettes this time. I think they're all good in their own way. The, the bottom couple aren't like my favorite thing on the planet, but I don't dislike them per se. Kicking it off with number one, this is the Fine Feathered Palette from ColourPop. It is a nine pan monochromatic palette. It is berry tones, and I do like this. I think it's pretty. I do get a little bored with the monochromatic thing, but I do think it's pretty. I do like berry tones. I like them on my eye color but I'm just not into berry tones so much right this second. I usually gravitate more towards this kind of color story in the winter time. I really like berries when it's cold out. I don't know why. Uh, so just because I know I'm not really gonna reach for something like this that much right now is the reason it's ranked lower. I have a feeling that if it was like January when this ranking was happening and this palette came out, this probably would have gotten pushed up a few palettes, but just as it stands right now compared to how I'm feeling and just what I have else to talk about. That's why this one's so low, but I don't dislike this one. I think it's pretty. There's no pressed glitters. We have a lot of mattes, two really pretty shimmers. I do like this one. I think it's really cute. So yeah, there's that. I did do a video where I played with both this and the High Tide palette at the same time. I did kind of a two-tone look and I do still plan on doing a TikTok slash Instagram video with this. I just haven't done it yet. I think I'm gonna do it really soon though. So stay tuned for more inspiration. Moving on, ranked number nine, I gave it to the Rare Beauty Confident Energy palette. And again, I don't dislike this palette per se. I just simply don't reach for all shimmer palettes too, too often. Let me try to hold this in a way that you can like see it it's so like reflective um i did already use this in a full face get ready with me with mostly rare beauty and have i done an instagram video with this yet if i haven't done it yet it's coming soon because i definitely want to film a tiktok and instagram video with this it is really pretty and i was actually pretty pleasantly surprised with just how rich the shimmers look on the lid they aren't crazy glitzy sparkly duochrome or anything like that um, but they just look nice and saturated. They have nice pigmentation. I was more impressed than I thought I would be. I will say this isn't my favorite thing from Rare Beauty. I definitely am vibing more with the cheek and lip products more than the eye products, but I do still like this. I think it's nice. I could see some people really vibing with this if you just want like more of a simple pop of color, all shimmer palette, this could be for you. And I don't dislike it, I just like everything else a little bit more. I don't reach for all shimmer palettes often enough to rank it much higher than this, unless the shimmers are like crazy glitzy special. Um, but yeah, there's that. Moving on, ranked number eight, we have the ColourPop Power Puff Girls palette. I did a get ready with me recently with this that I use this palette in. Um, and I do plan on doing an Instagram video slash TikTok, I think very soon. According to my schedule, the Instagram video slash TikTok should be up before this video goes up. So um, yeah, I like it. The main reason it's ranked so low is because there are two pressed glitters in here and that's just not my favorite thing on the planets. I prefer my glitters to be separate. I'm not anti-glitter, but I don't like them in my eyeshadow palettes because I'd rather there just be more eyeshadows. And I also feel like there are a few too many neutrals than necessary. I do like this glitter in particular because it's very translucent, 
but I don't feel like we needed these three neutrals. Overall, I do think it's really cute though. I really like how saturated and bright these mattes are down here. The shimmers are really cute. I feel like it does encapsulate the Powerpuff Girls pretty well, but I do think some of these neutrals could have been swapped out for something a little more exciting, like we could have done a nice bright purple. We could have had a really nice true, true red. That would have been really cool. There's a couple tweaks I feel like that could have been made, but overall I think it's cute. It's just not like my favorite thing on the planet. So there's that. Okay, so moving forward, I would say everything else are things that I genuinely like more. <laughs> I didn't dislike the first three, but all the ones going forward I like like a lot more. They're more in my, yeah, I'll probably keep that for quite a long time category. <laughs> Ranked number seven is the new Alter Ego Shadow Kiss Palette. This is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, I believe. I did already film an Instagram video slash TikTok with this, so go check that out. I love, love, love cool tone neutrals. It is my jam. If I'm gonna play with neutrals, it's almost always cool tones, and I could easily see this becoming one of my go-to neutral palettes. Either this or the That's Taupe. I don't think anything could beat the That's Taupe, but this comes pretty close, and I'm so happy because this does not have any of those creamy matte formulas in it that they've been doing lately. I'm so thrilled that it's just their regular powder matte formula because it's so good and their shimmers are so lovely, especially Shroud, such a beautiful dimensional shifty shadow. I'm really into this. I think it's gorgeous. I feel really pretty wearing these kinds of colors. Honestly, I thought this was gonna end up being a little bit higher on my list, but everything else just beat it by a little bit. Um, but I'm quite enjoying this one. I'm really happy that it exists. I will say when I first saw like the sneak peek of just the packaging, I wasn't very excited because I was like, hmm, it's gonna be gold and warm tones, but the inside completely surprised me. I feel like the inside does not match the packaging and I'm very pleasantly surprised with what the inside was. I love this, I think it's gorgeous. Moving on to finishing off the bottom five, ranked number six is the Cherry Crush palette from ColourPop. Now, when I first saw pictures of this, I was very unenthused because I thought it was just another monochromatic pinky red palette, but seeing it in person, I feel like it's more exciting than pictures let on, and I personally don't consider this a true monochromatic palette because here we have more like bright hot pinks. In the middle, we have more brighter, reddish raspberry kind of tones. And then over here we have almost plummy tones. So we have different things going on. Again, no pressed glitters, which makes me thrilled. We have five mattes, four beautiful shimmers. I did do an Instagram video slash TikTok with this. I love how bright this palette gets. It's very, very cute. I am gravitating towards bright colors lately. Obviously not on my eyes today. I'm a little more dark and moody, but as a general rule, I'm really feeling bright tones right now. So that's why this one made it up pretty high. And I'm just really enjoying how versatile this is. Again, we have like a really deep plum, but then we have like a really bright reddish color. And then we have like these more fuchsia-y hot pink shades. I think it's really cute. And I'm really happy with this one. And I really like the cherry theme. I think that's adorable. <laughs> Moving on to my top five of the recent last 10 palettes. Number five, I'm giving it to the High Tide palette. And I know I just said that monochromatic palettes aren't like my favorite thing in the world, but this one is the exception to the rule. Once in a while, a monochromatic palette comes out that blows my socks off. And I'm not anti-monochromatic, like I will use them. 100%, but I just like more of a curated, interesting color story. This is gorgeous. I'm shocked that ColourPop has not done teals before. I feel like this was actually needed in their lineup of monochromatic palettes. It's gorgeous. We have beautiful mattes, three lovely shimmers. I love the tones in here. Again, I featured this in that video with the Fine Feathered palette where I did a two-tone look, and I also did already upload a TikTok slash Instagram video. It's just gorgeous. It's stunning. I love these colors. I love teals, blue, green eyeshadow. It just gets me going. Never get sick of it. This is so fun, so pretty. Probably one of my favorite monochromatic palettes in their lineup, if not my number one favorite. It's really, really good. I'm really feeling this one. Moving on to number four, this is the Alien Cosmetics Bunnies palette. I was so stoked when they reached out wanting to send me this. I've been wanting to try them for a while and I'm so pleased with this palette so far. I did already upload an Instagram video slash TikTok and I really wanna upload a get ready with me playing with this at some point so you can see it on YouTube as well. My filming list is just so long and I'm trying so hard to fit everything in, but I'm loving this. The mattes are very pigmented and very blendable. Um, even the purple didn't really give me issues and sometimes purples can, but this is just really pretty. The shimmers are absolutely luscious, especially like 
these two right here they're so wet and shifty i'm very pleased with this palette it makes me very happy this was a very good first impressions of me trying alien cosmetics and i'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out for them more because i might be interested in trying more things from them down the road moving on to the top three i love 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 these next three these three are like wonderful like some of my favorite palettes i've tried lately number three is the ColourPop lush life palette and this just proves that ColourPop can come out with really interesting curated palettes. It can be done. This one's really hard to show on camera because it's so gold reflective on the back. I'm so sorry. It's just so pretty. I love the rich jewel toned like blue teal down here. We have a beautiful teal and green shimmer situation. We have nice rich warm tones to pair with those cool tones. And I'm not usually the biggest orange eyeshadow lover have been more into it lately something about this time of year i think it's like the summer and me transitioning into fall vibes even though it's not even close to fall it is in my heart i'm feeling it more i don't know i just really like this pairing of colors the only thing i would change about it and i realize that because of comments from you guys is i would add a bright yellow matte because i feel like that would have just added more to like the lush life toucan kind of vibes because there are toucans on the front of this palette but Overall, I love this palette. I think it's gorgeous. One of the best ones ColourPop has done this year, and it makes me really happy. Moving on, ranked number two is my Teresa is Dead palette with Lethal Cosmetics, the Lethal is Dead palette. I'm having so much fun with this. Like I said, the look I'm wearing today is from my two looks video. I did also already upload a first impressions and a TikTok slash Instagram video. So if you need some inspiration, go check those out. I've posted a lot with this palette. It is a spooky dream. Teresa is so deserving of this, and I'm so proud of her. She killed it. I love these colors. We have delicious pinky tones and blues, green, purple. It's all so good. I love it. I love the matte to shimmer ratio. I love Lethal's formula. I'm so, so pleased with this and I just could not be more proud of her. She's just one of my favorite people to watch on YouTube and I'm so, so thrilled that she got to do this and it is easily one of my favorite palettes of the year. I'm so impressed with this palette. It's so much fun. And finally, rounding it out, number one, I don't think this is going to surprise any of you because I've been so obsessed with this palette. I'm so happy I treated myself to it. It makes me so happy. I've already done a first impressions video, a TikTok slash Instagram video, and a two looks video. It is my Glam Light and Michaela palette. I'm so happy with this. It's so beautiful. And listen, I know it surprised me too that I was super into a 30 pan palette because ordinarily I don't go for large palettes. I like it to be usually 24 is tops, but I really like it to be 15 shades or less. Honestly, a nine pan palette is usually my go-to. Um, but I just love this. As soon as I saw pictures, it just stole my heart. There are so many delicious grungy shades in here. The shimmers are as beautiful in real life as they look in pictures, if not even better. They're so reflective and shifty and beautiful. I'll be honest, I haven't touched the neutrals except for this one, and this actually leans more purple. But everything else is just so delicious and lovely. I've had zero problems working with it. I have seen some comments that some of you have issues working with this palette that it's difficult for you to use. I personally have had zero issues. It's a breeze for me to work with. Everything blends like butter. I could not be happier. One of my favorite palettes of the year so far. It makes me so thrilled. I'm so happy I decided to treat myself to this palette because it's just, it makes me so happy. So yeah, this is my latest ranking my last 10 palettes video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if anything in my ranking surprised you. I would love to know if you've tried any of these out, what you think of them. If you wanna pick any of them up, let me know everything down below. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me your last 10 most recently used emojis. And if you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Butte Bean, follow me there. I post uh, every single day. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm posting most days here as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.